And we're going to talk a little bit more about lithium batteries in general. And I want to address the fact that I'm only running the one single lithium battery. There's one comment saying, oh you can't, you can't do that. You have to go and get one of these 48 volt batteries. I myself don't recommend to go for a 48 volt system in a four wheel drive. Because for one, it's going to be very heavy guys. So unless you're one of these lucky ones that are driving around in a Land Cruiser 200 or the new 300 or something huge like a Ram, something humongous and you don't need to use up all that room and you've got an endless bench supply, yeah, sure, go ahead, go and get one of those. I mean, awesome setup. Hey, welcome. Good morning from beautiful sunny Bundaberg up here in central Queensland, Australia. What a beautiful day. It's starting to get a little bit cooler guys. <laughs> We're getting close to that nice good camping weather. Actually I reckon if I was head up to out in the mountains up around the sunny coast I reckon she'd be nice and cool at night. Be ideal for sitting around the fire. So can't wait till next time to do that. <laughs> so in my opinion, 48 volt system, I don't think belongs in a four wheel drive. Especially for most of us. For number one, the weight that they are, you have to look, look everywhere to find a 48 volt battery, basically. So most of them, a combination of series, connect them in series and connect them in parallel. For example, let's talk about the plans that I've got to build a new battery system. A lithium battery. You might have seen if you watched my video the last two days, so I talked about I'm going to build a 12 volt, 304 amp hour battery. Which comprises of four cells and each cell is 3.2 volts. So they're 3.2 volts and they're 304 amps. So they're going to be connected into series, as a series. And when you connect them as a series, what that does is boost the voltage up, but not the amps. So we'll have four of these cells connected. You cannot tell, state, tell the charge rate of a lithium battery by voltage as you do with an AGM. A lot of people get fooled like that. In fact, I'd be out camping. And there'd be someone saying, oh wow, look at this, they'd be camping for like three, four days. Oh wow, my, look, I haven't used any battery power. I've been running the lights and I've been running all these fridges, two fridges and all this and stuff. And my induction cooktop and my battery's still at 13 volts. I hasn't used up any energy. <laughs> In regards to lithiums, guys, you won't notice the voltage is coming down until the batteries discharge down to about 80% out, close to 90%. So virtually almost flat before you'll see the voltage starts to come down. That's a big advantage with the lithium is it holds a higher, higher voltage throughout the range. Especially you guys who are using Travel Buddy. In fact, I should do a test with me Travel Buddy on the lithium to see if it cooks the meat pies quicker than what it did with my kick-ass battery that was generally sitting on about 12.5, 12.6 while it was running. So generally the lithium batteries can hold a higher charge and they can handle more amperage. So as long as you've got nice thick cables that can handle the amperages and thick enough to handle so there's no drops in voltage keep the cable run as short as possible and use proper crimping tools. That's really critical, particularly when you're going into lithiums with their high discharge rates and the high charge rates, that you are more prone to resistance. 
and resistance equals heat. Heat eventually equals fire. So you have to really critically make sure it's the same with your AGM, but more so important, I think, with the lithium battery to make sure everything is marred up correctly. You've got the correct fusing. You've got the correct wiring. Make sure your fuses are rated a bit less than what the wiring is. That way your wires won't heat up before the fuse blows. So that's important. And to work out that, work that out guys, you need to work out what you're running off there. Like for example in my case, I've got the multi-plus there. So I've got 70 mil cable there. Now I could have gone away with 60 mils or 55 mil or thereabouts with the short run that I'd done. But I went one bigger. And I've got a fuse there, well below the maximum capacity of what that wiring. So if anything shall go wrong, then the fuse will blow before the wire overheats. So far that's never happened guys. I haven't had a fuse blow in this system here at all for probably five, six years since I started building my own system. I've only had one fuse blow and that's when I had a short on the wiring on my rooftop tent and that was just a little like 15 amp fuse in my Elon DC hub. It's the only fuse I can ever recall it's ever blown on any of my systems that I've built and for my vehicle in the past six years. So now in the past year I've gone lithium as you know and boy what a game changer that is. Let's talk about the different voltages. So you might hear some people talk about well most people talk about your 12 volt systems for your four drive. And when you start going into you know caravanning and more so full-time travelers people that live full-time on the yachts traveling around the world you start hearing them running on like 24 volt or 48 volt systems so the reason they run on the 24 48 volt systems is to do for you mainly it's to do for your 240 volt systems because then what happens then it doesn't work your system as hard you don't have as high of amperage draw as you would with a 12 volt system okay so for example let's go buy my little air fryer it, it consumes about 100 amps out of my battery when it's running so it's about a thousand watts and that's in a 12 volt system now when you jump your battery up to 24 volt system and to do that so the way you connect your batteries and we'll talk about how you wire all that up on, on another video and then you've got to be really critical depending on what load you're pushing from it make sure you use really good connections to connect those two batteries together so if you want to go to 24 volt on a lithium battery then you series connect the two together what that does as I mentioned before it increases the volts so it doubles the volts. If I've got two 12 volt batteries, they will then give me 24 volts. So it'll still be the same amps. Say, for example, in my case, I tech world here. It's at rate of capacity 105 amps. So just to make the maths easier, let's just give it, let's just say 100 amps. So then I will have 24 volt at 100 amps. But then what that also does for a 240 volt system is it halves the draw on it. So instead of it drawing 100 amps, it's now drawing 50 amps. And it's the same if I double that again and go to 48 volt volts, it will draw 24 amps. And another advantage of that, particularly if you've got very long cable runs, is that you will save quite a considerable lot of money on your cables because then think about it you do not need as thick a cable for 12 volt so you'll get out with much cheaper thinner runs of cable so if you've got a big caravan RV system that you're decking out and it's a huge 
or you're on a your personal yacht and you're about to travel around Australia and you're wiring it out and it's like for 40 50 foot yacht or whatever 60 foot most of them all seem to be around about to 40 50 feet and you're running cables from the front the back and all around and definitely the 24 volt and the 48 volt systems come into play then and you've got plenty of room as well and it's very critical so you don't mind spending quite a fair bit more money in it now there is cheaper ways to go if you're doing like i did before and you build your own system and some people are building their own 48 volt systems and it works out a lot cheaper than going you know uptown or ordering a 48 volt system from from someone so if you do this yourself it works out a lot cheaper and you purchase the cells so in my case say these single cells are 3.2 volts and they're 304 amps well then you can build a 48 volt system from that by using 16 cells and then you can make your 48 volt system now it's quite a fair bit of weight and it's quite a fair big area now example this battery i plan on going to build myself it'll be a 12 volt 304 amp it's going to weigh around 24 25 kilos so from there you can give you a pretty good idea on the weight some of you out there thinking that if you're going to have a 240 volt system in your vehicle you have to have a 24 or 48 volt system in your vehicle and i i don't agree with that i don't agree with that i think a 12 volt system is more than enough because generally the, the cable runs are shorter in a vehicle and number two the batteries are generally a lot lighter as well and number three the cost of components are a lot cheaper as well and number four you don't need to end up having to run all these 48 volt down to 12 volt converters so you can run your 12 volt appliances which you will still use a lot of on your vehicle and the weight imagine the weight of the battery and the size the volume so don't get fooled in this misconception i think it's a word something like that that you have to have these huge expensive systems to be able to do what i've done similar to here now yeah i'll probably spend a little bit more than what most of you do but guys i've looked out for specials i've purchased items bit by bit over the years some of the Victron gear sitting in here is five or five years old. Guys, it's not all brand new. Some of it's over five years old that I've owned it. Some of it have I replaced over the years as, for example, my battery monitor, the shunt, that played up. So I replaced it with the Victron at the time. And at the time I had no plans on going such a system like I've done here. But thank goodness in my case that I actually went for the Victron because it's just given me so much opportunity. It's so versatility. It's just so much I can do with it. I can set it up. I've got so many ways I can options I can set it up. Whereas a lot of manufacturers around, you just cannot do that. You're just stuck with one. They're, they're way back in the old days. You know, they're not, they're not sort of going with the future things are changing i think in the future we're going to see more people running like 240 volt systems induction cooktops etc in the vehicles such as nowadays we see more people are starting to run your upright upright fridges and those that are running those upright fridges are now starting to see the advantages they have over your chest type style fridges so guys just just wanted to a quick video it's like a easter saturday if there is an easter saturday so I just went uptown to look for some easter eggs and boy aren't the easter eggs expensive this year far out it's just crazy i couldn't believe the prices of easter eggs 
I mean, Mum wanted Easter eggs, so I went uptown and got her one, and I bought one myself as well. And I finally managed to find Target had some on sale. But even on sale, they were really expensive. But crazy, they just had Cadbury normal size Easter eggs like this for $20. $20 for an Easter egg. Not much bigger than my hand, guys. $20. I've just can't. Jeez, I don't ever think I ever recall seeing such high prices on, on chocolate. It's amazing. So, and people are buying it too. The shops are just about empty. Normally you go on a Saturday and they're getting rid of them half price. And I went to a few shops before I could find any. And they were still asking big money. So, <laughs> people are buying them this year. So it's crazy. Okay, guys, this is going to keep this video short. I don't want to spend all afternoon editing this video. So, I'm going to keep this one short before it gets too long. So, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Comment down below what you think. You know, if you're going 240 volt, do you have to have 48 volt and 24 volt systems? I mean, guys, they're, they're more so for your huge, huge setups, you know. If you're doing a big uni mog with a big, you know, freaking slide on camper at the back or something. You know, that's something where I'd, I will definitely do a setup like that. You've got a 40 foot, 50 foot yacht that you're going to travel around the world in and live on. Yeah, I'd definitely do something like that. If you've got a Land Cruiser 200 and you've got endless pockets, you know, can support the weight, yeah, yeah shoot off the safari and go buy, you know, spend your twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 and get in a 48 volt system. That will work absolutely amazing. Incredible the gear that they do, but it's not for everyone. Some people got the misconception that, oh, it's only going to last three minutes. Well, have you, have you guys actually watched my videos to see how much it actually consumes? It works out similar to what my travel buddy does to cook the same item. Because it, and it cooks it a lot better in an air fryer. So honestly, you guys don't just think induction cooktops is the main advantage with going to 240 volt. Look at air fryers, guys. Look at it. Look at your little portable air fryers. You can buy for like for fifty, sixty dollars around the place. Now you'll be surprised how well they work. So, guys, please subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, look after yourself. Be kind, everyone, and cheers. <laughs> That's a magpie. <laughs> funny. If only had a 360 degree camera right now, guys. Literally, there's a magpie sitting a meter away from me at the front, just staring at me. So it's a bit distracting. I don't know how long he's been sitting there, but <laughs> extraordinary. Amazing birds, these, these magpies, aren't they? For you folks who are not in Australia, if you don't know what they are, they're the ones that uh, many are feared of. They attack you when, during the nesting season. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, do they attack you. They're those black and white birds. <laughs> and they got a beak on there like you. Wow. <laughs> if you're worried about parrot beaks, man, you got to watch out for these things, eh?